Maestro. Hey, morning. So what have I got here? The Maestro. You can see very slim line. Two A's, two B's, two C's, and a Stabilo. Proudly displaying the Hannes Puppish signature as a designer. Look, we've had quite a build up to this wing. Um, Fee's been teasing us because Hannes has started off with the A class. So he first released the Symphonia, which is a high A. We've had the Sonata, which is an A. And he's gone for the Tenor, which is a mid B. And uh, slowly worked his way up to this wing. Maestro. So what's a Maestro? Well, if you, if you think about how the, the whole range has been set up, um, we've got the Tenor, which is a place as a mid B, but is a very capable XC glider. You can see uh, Carlo's review, and uh, that wing is very good for cross country. So they've already got a, a quite a capable cross country wing. It's a progression wing, but yeah, it goes into the XC class. Certainly, um, it's certainly challenging some of the the top XC gliders in the high B class. So that sets Fee up to be able to make this Maestro sit right at the top of the high B class. They don't have to cater to the, the lower end of that B category. They can position it right at the top to get the maximum performance. Um, but let's see what the handling's like. Is it tricky and right on the edge or is it quite accessible? Let's find out. Very soft, uh, loose sort of brake. Just a bit of sponginess in the base. Quite big enough and quite easy to get your hand out of. Fair amount of force being generated on the ground. Not particularly strong conditions, but wing's got a fair pull to it. holding it down on the brakes there and it's a little bit untidy so let's transition to the back risers holding the back risers in easy and nice controlled I haven't got much brake on there I'm just using the back risers I want it to rise up in the center but if I walk towards it it'll calm down And let's take back risers and the back and the brakes. And that gives it a nicer shape, easier to control on the ground. Check my airspace. Just gonna pop it up with no hands. Quite easy. Okay, if you just pull up like that, it generates quite a lot of force on the pull-up. Brakes are light. And they feel responsive. That's just a quarter brake. It's 
quite light to get there. So it's fairly deep brakes. And that's good resistance to stall. Didn't feel like it is wanting to go without any warning. Down at my hips, and there it goes. Just going to do a normal pull up using the center A's. Seems to be less power doing that. Pull up on the center A's. Very light and easy. light really. That is light and responsive. When you combine it with the moderately short or accessible stall point you get a little bit more challenging launching because if the wing dies forward and you catch it too hard you can stall it like that and then the wings behind you. So it's definitely not for a beginner pilot. A beginner you're going to find that a little bit tricky to, to control. Having said that, if you know what you're doing, you can get this sort of launch where you just step off. because everything's gone shaded. A little bit of a thermal there, but I can feel as soon as I turn, I'm out of the front already, so it wasn't big enough to do a 360. So in that case, I'm just gonna come back through the same lift again. Do gentle figure of eights. There it is. But you see it's already, I'm out the other side. I'm in the sink there. And it's very small. So my back here. That's where the lift is. And now I'll go straight into wind. Just change direction a bit. It's a bit more northeast. Into wind on that. There's a call and if I'm quick, I can hook it round on that one. And on my second turn, I can get it slightly better into the core by just widening out my turn slightly. Okay, I'm not going to get away in this, but it's certainly worth working. Maestro feels nice on the glide. It's uh, very steady and it's not jumping ahead. little hawk turning here. He's not really climbing either. He's just kind of there. Very light. So I'm feeling I'm getting a, a nice turn on this, um, but not as much uh, speed and energy as I'd get on a C-class. It's, uh, it's a little bit dampened out, but really just a touch. Just taking the sting out of the turn. It is fairly quick. It's a, a tight enough turn without being a, a very whiffy turn. It's a good climbing turn, very efficient. Moderate pressure that are, that's required. It's fairly light initially, but the actual turn that I'm requiring to do for the thermaling, moderate pressure. 
That's the core. Just putting in one brake to see what it does. I'm not using the outside brake. And you can time that and see how quick that 360 was. This is a sort of established 360 without using the outside. Very easy. I'm not having to actually manage the outside. You can just let that go. And this is locked here. I do this sometimes as a test to see how much weight shift do I need to do to counteract the energy of the glider. I mean, this is really sweet and easy. I'm doing very little adjustments. I'm not doing anything with my inside hand. I mean, I'm not suggesting this is a safe thing to do. I'm just showing you this is locked so that you can see I'm not doing any input. I'm just leaving it and letting it go around by itself and it's finding its balance quite happily. Now if I was going to add this, I'd be using that just to catch some of the lift and just to slow down when I want to straighten up. And if I'm going to use the inside brake, I'd be tightening on the stronger lift. But pretty much don't have to do anything really. Glide is set. It's just going round and it's happy. One of the tests I like to do just to test the glider to see if it's safe in the class is to put in too much brake on the inside in a thermaling turn with a bit of outside brake on. So it's like a really slow turn, it's like what you do. Let's grab it around like that. I've got a lot of brake on. I feel like it's there, it's just about a slip. Yeah. It took quite a while. It was a very smooth thermal, but it shows that the glider's very safe. So now we can try bar. I'm going on to the first step. Going on to the second step, I need to spread my legs a little bit just to get full bar. And looking at the weighed handles and the back risers, it gives you a little bit of a kink. I'd prefer to have a, a linked system here. Lovely thermal. Okay, how cool was that? <laughs> that was really nice. I mean, for a completely gray overcast day, managed to pop out a little triangle. That was sweet, getting up on the point up there and getting up really high. Beautiful view. Managed to do a big glide all the way back into wind and ended up where I started. So, <laughs> it just proves that Paragliders still don't have a hell of a lot of reach into wind. I had a 20k headwind, one meter a second thermal. Pretty much when I left the thermal and went on glide, I ended up where I'd started about half an hour earlier. So um, a very difficult day to do a triangle. I didn't manage to get out in front of the ridge, but uh, managed to get there, over the back, down to the corner and back again. So it was a nice little challenge. I had about two hours of flying on the Maestro. Um, thermic conditions, a little punchy at times, but generally pretty smooth. Um, probably about one meter a second on average. Sometimes going up to two. Um, and I had to be very um, 
precise with my turns to stay in the lift to make the most out of these weak conditions. Um, the glider certainly felt very, very light in the air. Um, the brake pressure is quite light in the beginning and then when you're in a thermaling turn, moderate pressure. Reasonable amount of travel down to that thermaling point but it does start giving you a bit of response on the very light first little piece. So if you're wanting just to fly around delicate feely kind of stuff, you don't need much pressure. But there's definitely a second step of medium pressure when you're thermaling and turning. Um, the wing is um, quite calm, um, light and calm, not calm in a, uh, in a heavy kind of way, calm in a, just a kind of a steady way with light feeling. Um, I definitely had a lot of feeling through the wing and I also felt that you had to be on it, you, you had to stay on the controls. It wasn't the kind of wing that's got this kind of massive collapse resistance and sort of reinforced feeling um, which kind of bulldozes through everything. It's definitely not that. It's on the other end of the scale where I felt like in bumpy active conditions I didn't want to let go of the controls to fiddle around with my instruments. I felt like I needed to be there just to put in those small um, catch motions and active flying input. Um, it's not uh, scary, it's not like it's about to do something wild, but I did feel like I had some tip collapses, closures where I was fiddling around with something and the glider went whoop forward and you need to be on it. And the turns, uh, the turn is a, a nice quick turn. Um, if you put in the brake quickly and you hook a turn around it will turn and then it will flatten out a little bit. It doesn't turn and then want to hook and roll. So I felt like the turns weren't rolling a lot, but just the right amount. Very nice. You can, you can grab onto something, swing it around, and then that energy kind of, the speed's still there, you can go into your turn, but it kind of flattens out. Which gives you this nice it gives you this uh, nice quick catch the thermal and then flatten out and go straight into thermaling efficiently. It doesn't um, roll over into the thermal. You don't have to be controlling that kind of roll. I found you, you needed very little on the outside brake if anything. You can just put your thermaling turn in. I did one long turn where I just sort of clamped my hand onto the riser, onto the, the carabiner and let the other hand go just to test and I didn't need to do a lot of adjusting in my harness. So that tells you something about the, the smoothness and the steadiness of the turn. It doesn't accelerate a lot and then you don't have speed that you need to control. It's fairly calm and smooth in its thermaling turn, which is very nice. I, I found it was very easy to thermal and, and um, relaxing. I wasn't using a lot of energy up to control the glider in the thermal. When I straightened up and I went on bar, um, it felt fairly light on the bar, it did accelerate nicely, um, I could still feel a lot of the air. Now some gliders when you go onto bar they kind of stiffen up and you feel like you don't get a lot of feeling about what the air is doing. Um, I'm thinking more of like the mental gliders which seems to be when you go on bar it feels like there's a lot of uh, tolerance still for more bar like it's fairly dull on, on bar. The Maestro certainly, I could feel all the little air currents still. So you still feel like you, you want to be on the back risers at least and just controlling the glider, getting a feeling of what the air is doing. Don't just put on the bar and fiddle with your instruments. Big ears comes in easily. Um, they shake but the glide is stable, just the tips shake and if you let them go they reinflate on their own the, the majority of the section in reinflates and then the last little bit of the tips just kind of like tickle out over time. I felt on glide um, it didn't feel like it was jumping ahead it felt like it was sitting maybe five degrees back from vertical not very scientific I know but that was the feeling um, like it was balanced and it, it didn't need a lot of uh, management and it wasn't it wasn't knocking back or jumping forward it was a fairly steady glide um, I did feel as I went into lift that the glider did sit slightly back 
and then it would come back to return. That's pretty normal for an XE class wing. Um, that's where you'll find a bit of a difference if you go up a class, the gliders start to sort of like cut into the thermal and lead forward. I felt it knocked slightly back before it went into the thermal. So who's the Maestro for? I think definitely experienced pilots that are looking for that high B safety um, in reinflation and the, the way the glider holds itself together. Um, pilots that enjoy a glider that's got feeling and feedback in the air um, and a glider that does demand a little bit of you that you need to be on the glider on the controls sort of engaged and in contact with the air certainly gives you a very good contact feeling with the air currents like I could feel what was going on all around me even accelerated you're getting feedback from the air so it's not a dull glider it's got um, life but not a lot of energy it feels like it's fairly calm it's if you go into a turn you know if you put in a lot of brake you get a, a quick response but then it flattens out and converts that into a nice climbing turn so it's not like something that's got loads of energy it feel, feels fairly together and fairly balanced um, quite easy to fly um, having said that I do feel it's at the, the top end of the, the high B class in terms of pilot demands and the pilot match. The ideal pilot isn't a pilot that's um, straight out of school for sure or unsure, hasn't done an SIV course, not kind of totally on top of their gliding and uh, active flying skills. You need to be a fairly advanced pilot um, to be getting a good match with this wing and being able to sync with it. Um, I felt like it had a fair amount of power on the pull-up, on the launch. Um, the launch wanted to go ahead and you needed to be able to control that and time your launch properly. And also if you kind of jam on the brakes to stop it going ahead, you can get to the stall point. It's uh, fairly long travel, um, pretty average for the class, but uh, that could catch you out if you're a beginner and you've got this surge and you need to hold it back and I think for pilots that are wanting to really get going on their XC flying are going to spend hours in the air want that um, a glider that isn't tiring to fly because of the light controls and the responsive handling it uh, doesn't take a lot out of you but it keeps you connected with the air um, it's great for big XC adventures and pilots who want to go far.